Surprise, motherfucker! This is part two. Part two of my video on alignments. As I said in the last video, um, alignment was just one of those things in Crimson Dragon Slayer D20 that it was kind of there in the background and it stayed so much in the background that it never really like came to the foreground. You know, it never really became an issue or was used for much. Um, which on one hand is, is fine because you can't, you can't include everything to a significant degree because there's just so many things. However, Crimson Dragon Slayer as a rule set is very light. It's like 15 pages. And so if there is a rule in there, then you would think over 14 sessions of a campaign, it would come up, you know, at least once or twice um, as playing a significant role in the game. It just never did, which was what prompted me to redo the alignment system. Um, and I know I'm not the first. A lot of people have looked at their rule set, their system, and alignment in general or specific, and were just like, what am I going to do with this? Um, you know, other people have done other things. Uh, you know, there's the whole law chaos thing uh, versus, you know, the nine alignments like chaotic good and neutral evil and stuff like that. Uh, I definitely wanted to go back to the basics and a more Appendix N kind of thing, but then also put my own spin on it and not rely on earlier versions of D&D &D to do all the heavy lifting for me. So, um, so I talk about the, um, the law versus chaos. And before I had two different kinds of neutral where um, there was like neutral trying to seek balance and then a neutral that was um, unaligned. And uh, that was kind of a distinction without a difference for what I'm trying to do now. So now I'm just lumping neutral into like its own category. If you want to be neutral, that's fine. Then you don't get, you know, the benefits and drawbacks of choosing a side of law or chaos. Um, someone mentioned in a video, uh, religious factions. And that's, that's kind of what I want to do with alignment. I mean, I think that's one of the ways of making it come alive and useful to a game master and to the system and a campaign. Uh, you want these differences of opinion uh, or philosophy or way of life to to matter to such a degree that people draw sides and then once you've drawn sides you know uh, there's conflict uh, inherent if not outright and in everybody's face with people fighting each other you know maybe it's more of a cold war kind of conflict than um you know, in a hot war, the people just like constantly like stabbing each other or whatever. Uh, so I like the idea, and I started that even before I read the comment of, of alignment as religious factions. Um, specifically, I wanted to keep alignment and make it more into a religious faction type of thing because Chalt is religious and um, I wanted religion to be a significant part of the world in the campaign setting because uh, you have the great old ones the old gods and then you got the new gods um, and then you have various demons and, and you know infernal powers and uh, you know and also you know other beings um 
that are kind of either in between or, or outside of that paradigm. Uh, but yeah, I wanted, because it's, because Schultz is eldritch and uh, has a definite Lovecraftian influence, I wanted that to come to the fore and I wanted that to become a bigger piece of the puzzle of what Schultz is about. And so that was another reason why instead of just ditching alignment, I wanted to redo it to be more satisfactory to what I wanted to see in the adventures and in the campaign and just in the world itself. Um, and I've got a little cheat sheet I wrote out of things that this is more game design philosophy in general. Um, so this is the kind of thing that I look for whenever I'm designing. You know, I could be designing something like a new initiative system or, you know, whatever. Um, players, uh, I want players to have options and to be able to do cool things. Uh, I want it to have a positive impact on the world and the campaign setting. As a GM, I want to be able to maneuver in that space as well and able, be able to have options myself and do what I would consider cool things. Uh, not just like, like, pew pew, like shoot off fireballs and, and <laughs> fancy powers like that, but do come up with weird or interesting or dramatic moments or encounters um, during the campaign, during adventures, and um, and sort of helping to forge the overall story um, using those elements and then seeing how the players their feedback bounces back what I did to create like the whole thing uh, because it's not just the game master saying like well this is the story and you know I wrote it out this way and the players are just like acting their parts you know I put my input in and the players put their input in and together we create like a story together as a whole um what else um so yeah I've, I've been writing the alignment rewriting it um there's something that i remembered from an old movie uh it's from the 80s the golden child I don't know if you remember this at all. I haven't seen it in a while. But I did watch it. I don't know. I don't know the last time I watched it. Six, seven, eight years ago. But I can still... When I was on HBO as a kid, I watched it, like, a lot. And I can remember at least one scene where... Um, Noomspar, or whatever his name is, the, the main bad guy, he's sort of, like, meditating or... or doing some sort of like demonic prayer and then like everything just falls away and he's just like I don't know he's in, in hell or something like that uh, with fire and demons and things like that around him um, and he's communing with his you know with the devil or some evil god or demon lord or something like that and then they have just this one on one time um, anyway I will be showcasing it. Uh, I gotta go because my wife is calling and texting me because I'm a target to pick up some stupid crap. Uh, anyway, I will be showcasing it very soon, uh, probably next week. And so, yeah, look for it then and uh, have a good one. <laughs>